We are on our way to our homestay, part of our vacation. We've got two days with a family, and we're going to stop and have lunch at the largest equestrian statue in the world. I guess it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. Genghis Khan on top of a horse, and you can go up to the horse's head and look at the surrounding countryside. There's Rachel and our guide and translator, Tem, and we're heading up now. And, I didn't get my camera out fast enough, but there's an eagle we passed. They actually hunt, or they have, hunted wolves with eagles. And you can see there's a little bit of a spot over here. You can kind of check stuff out. Some gears, statues. That was the entrance we came in. There's some gears on the countryside over there. Kind of look like a tourist camp or something. Bot just told me that's a statue of Chinggis Khan's mother. Oolong, I think is her name. Anyway, it's quite a little distance off. Hey, hello. Hi, hello. Hello. Hello, Tabat. <laughs> hello, YouTube. Thank you. Larry, you The evolution of the gear. They started off like in the teepees. And then they went to full felted wool. even a baby goat inside one. Okay, so we stopped at a we stopped at a Mongolian fast food place. <laughs> uh, Temka, our guide, our uh, translator, our guide, said that it's like a Mongolian McDonald's, but actually it's not. It's obviously way cooler. We get to eat inside this gear, and there's outside seating. The kitchen is right there. That gear. So it's uh, look at the Russian van going by. Great, they've got a stove going for us. This is the restaurant, or seating area rather. You can see Rachel and Temka and Bot. This is larger than the average size. Much larger. See the doors are really colorful. It just smells really great with the wood fire going. It's not very cold or anything, but it's just, what an atmosphere, man. Check this out. Trip. Yeah, we're 
having a good time. <laughs> I'm getting a fried meat pocket and sheep rib soup. So we're just a little, we're just across the street from the monument we were just at. We did a whole tour of the upstairs and the horse's head. We were looking down around this place. Main floor. Uh, there was actually a restaurant there too that we were going to eat at, but, in, but they were having a wedding reception there, so they said it was going to take a real long time, so we decided to come here. And then main floor, they had the big boot, the biggest boot in Mongolia. They had Chinggis's golden whip, it is, hopefully he found in this area. And then uh, uh, I think it was in the basement where we were at in the museum. So, yeah. Beautiful, huh? Mountains off in the distance, mountains even closer. Cows for neighbors. Chengis's mother, statue of Chengis's mother. I can't remember if I said it before, but I've been a couple times mistaken. I said that UB had about a population of about 3 million. Actually, the entire country of Mongolia has a population of about 3 million. And UB has about 1.5 million. So half the population lives in UB. The rest of this entire huge country is barely populated with 1.5 million people. Pretty cool. You having fun? Yes. <laughs> How was your lunch? Delicious. What'd you have? Homemade noodles and vegetable stir fry with mutton. With mutton, yep. I had mutton rib soup with fried meat pockets with mutton in them. So I smell like a big mutton. <laughs> and that was considered fast food. Yeah, it's much yeah, it more was healthy than our fast much food. more healthy. It took it, it wasn't fast. It was nice and homemade. It was good. It was fast, but I mean it was just homemade and good from scratch. We're in the family's house and there's a little bit of a dust storm kicking up. We're just getting to know him a little bit. And I can't even pronounce the lady's name. It's it's terrible. I can't pronounce anybody's name. Dust storm kicking up. I've had three bowls of fermented mare's milk. I'll tell you something. Fermented mare's milk is uh, definitely something to get used to. Uh, it can give you a uh, what they call a runny stomach, which as you can imagine, uh, isn't going to be pleasant. So hopefully I don't get that. Um, ugh. A lot of dust kicking up. They said just to feel right at home, but you can see what's going on here. Uh. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> Drinking fermented Miller mare's milk in the middle of Mongolia in a gear. <laughs> so, our host family lady, which I cannot pronounce the name, is milking mares. I already had a bunch of fermented mare's milk, and I'm holding a bucket of mare's milk, and we need to fill it all the way to the top. My job they've entrusted me with is holding this bucket. That's basically the only thing they can trust me with. Instructed to stay the heck away from the horses. And watch her work. They lead the young colt to the mare and let her drink first. And that evidently makes the milk drop. Like how when you milk a cow, you kind of tap its udder a little bit. But I think that the way they're bringing the foal to the mare drink a little bit and that drops the milk. Now she is going with hands the speed of light to milk over the milk. And they don't produce as much milk as cows, they milk every two hours. guy here bringing the, the foal around. Likes to make fun of my beard. He's been making fun of me since I showed up. <laughs> but his job seems to be to grab the foal and bring it to the lawn. Right? Especially with the way the weather is right now. They've got a little bit of an attitude. Like I said, my only job
job is to hold this bucket of milk. He's talking and writing at the same time. He's talking on his telephone. Oh, it looks like he hung up. So Bot is churning the mare's milk. They've added a culture to it, and he's churning it. And he was teasing. He says that each person needs to do it 300 times. Maybe he wasn't teasing. I don't know. But anyway, this is how they make the fermented mare's milk. And then Rachel is showing her our family from a picture. But there's Bot churning the mare's milk. And then Larry's mama. Uh, she, she said that the first milk of the summer they'll add in whatever that ferments. Mm. They'll put in yogurt or yellow rice or even raisins perhaps oh. to make it ferment. But once they have fermented mare's milk, for, for the new batch of mare's milk, they'll use the previous mare's milk. Right. That makes sense. Got a fire going in the stove, it's starting to heat up. I think she's going to make tea, I'm not sure. Um, if you have the fire on, you can't close it all the way. Because the... Because of the stove pipe. Covering, yeah. Can't touch the chimney. So she's closing the gear. Okay. Lid a little bit there. She's going to add dried animal dung yep. to the fire. That's a fuel, obviously. And there it goes. That's going to be a fuel. They only use the wood that's going probably to start it with. That'll do a nice smoldering fire, nice heating fire. So these are dried cheese curds. We have cheese curds in Minnesota, but never dried cheese curds. It tastes kind of like, they add a little bit of sugar to it, so it tastes kind of like a dried candy <laughs> a little bit. Well, I think Rachel's going to start churning some mare's milk. Come on, Rachel. She said you got to be tough. I don't want to splash. Well, everybody else has been splashing. Just try not to splash too much. Come on, give it some. Come on, get going. Here, you, Robert. Be good. Get going. Here, I gotta walk this way. What are you doing, Rachel? I'm trying. You need to do it hard. Be tough. Look, you're just spinning it. See? That's what you gotta do. You gotta get tough. Look, she knows what she's doing. She's not gonna splash. Bring it up. Okay. I bolted them. Yeah. Oh. Aerate it. You have to aerate it. Oh, okay. In 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 towards the side. Towards the wall, yeah. Okay. You don't have to do exercises after oh. that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is she counting? Seven. She's counting? Yeah. She's supposed to do 300. Uh, 
のうんせんべいおりやすらせ She's telling her to get tough, basically. She says, get going. She says she's too easy. You're better than our driver. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's already doing better than Bot. And Bot got a phone call. Yeah, Bot was out of here. This is where we're going to sleep tonight. I said stronger and it's better if it's making a... So it's not focusing, sorry, my camera's messed up, but Rachel's over there churning her heart out, and there's the finished product there, which I had about three bowls. So, there's no such thing as too much churning. The more you churn, the better. But there is a thing as um, not much churning. So the more you churn, the better. Mm -hmm. But there's okay. such a thing as not churning enough. Okay. So whenever they put a fresh batch of horse milk, mm -hmm. they'll churn it as much as they possibly can. I see. You're doing good, Rachel. <laughs> Some people will do it as they're going in and out of the gear. Before they go out, they'll turn it a few dozen times. When okay. they come back in, they'll turn it again as sure. much as they can. It says, teach our driver how to do it. <laughs> There's Larry churning the horse's milk, and there's a special way to do it. So we're trying to figure it out. Larry, are you mm -hmm. having fun? Yeah. <laughs> I like seeing all the bubbles come up on top. I think that means you're doing it right. I know, Girly's going to check and see. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you're doing okay, Larry. <laughs> there goes Rachel galloping off into the distance on a wild Mongolian horse. Actually, she's being led. We're pretty novices, so she's doing good. And I guess that one's my horse. Larry is here cleaning horse poop. <laughs> Say hi, Larry. Uh, hi, Larry. <laughs> that pile. Gurley is making dumplings. Look how fast she's rolling the things out. It's like she's like a machine. 
She's been doing about 15 things at once. She's collected the mare's milk, strained it, telling people what to do, and rolling them bad boys out. Look at that. She's a dumpling making machine. And then we've got the meat filling right there next to Rachel, and they're wondering if Rachel can pinch dumplings. I got sick a little bit, so I don't think I'm going to touch them. For some reason I'm sick, I have a cold or something. I'm not feeling so good. So. It's a beautiful day out here this morning. Uh, this is our last morning with this family. Uh, man, last night, I felt, yesterday I felt horrible. Last night I had a fever. Uh, just felt like sleeping, basically. I slept a lot last night. And yesterday, after we got done riding horses, I didn't film much riding, I didn't film anything riding horses. I just felt horrible. They gave me, they made some uh, milk vodka, they call it. So they take fermented cow yogurt and they do this contraption. I took some pictures of it. Hopefully I can transfer the pictures to the video. But it, um, basically you boil the yogurt, the fermented yogurt, and you make a catchment system. And then the moisture falls into a container. And that makes a vodka that's about 15% alcohol. And they could tell I wasn't feeling good at all. I was just not feeling good. And a remedy for a cold, I guess, is some milk vodka with butter in it. I don't know if that did the trick or what, but I feel a lot better today. I don't have a fever. Um, I just, you know, I'm still a little bit weak, a little bit groggy. Uh, we just woke up, but uh, I feel a lot better. I was really worried that the rest of my trip I was going to feel miserable. We have a four, what do we have, a 3 a.m. wake-up call tomorrow to fly to um, Ogi for the Eagle Festival. And so I was just really worried that I wasn't going to be able to, that it was just going to be miserable, but I feel a lot better today. Beautiful day out today. You can see we went and visited that gear over there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Where's it at? That gear over there. We went and visited that. It's a good friend of um, Oidu's, the husband's. A good friend of his. We rode horses over there. They were real careful with us with the horses. They wouldn't let us go by ourselves. We're really novices when it comes to riding horses. And these aren't like super tame horses like you find in the States. I mean, these were really nice horses and everything but they were worried about us so they just held a lead rope to us and let us walk alongside of them but which is fine with me and we had English saddles which I'm not used to writing English either I'm not used to writing Mongolian and I'm not used to writing English Western is about the only way I've ridden but we got to ride horses yesterday but yeah yesterday is a little bit of a fog for me just because I just felt so horrible yeah, beautiful day today. We're supposed to go to the market today, the, the black market they call it. It's not really a black market, but that's just what they call it. So, 
And here's Rachel, she's up this morning. How are you doing? <laughs> she said it's good. So, bought our driver, slept in his car, which is right there to the left of Rachel. So, yeah, it's going to be a good day today. This is what we're going to have for breakfast this morning. We've got bread, and this is butter. It's just a very raw form of butter.